Good morning. I'd like to spend some time this morning talking about uh, Chapter 3 of Healy, the uh, Measures of Central Tendency. Um, when we think about Central Tendency or the next chapter, Dispersion, we want to think about distribution. Now we know when we think about statistics, we think about how things vary. We've talked about variables, gender varies, male, female, income varies from a little bit of money to a whole lot of money. Uh, race and ethnicity varies. There are scores upon scores, numerous variables, issues of interest to uh, social scientists and, um, that are variable. And one of the ways we think about, uh, another word that we use for uh, variable is variation. So uh, the variation of gender is male and female. Uh, the variation of a uh, income uh, is from low to high. But when we, when we put values in there, for example, if we were to say how many men or how many women in each of those categories of um, gender, then we'd be thinking more in terms of uh, distribution. So how does, how does income distribute, distribute over all the possible values of income? How does, how does gender distribute over all the possible uh, values, shall we say, of gender? And I put up here on the whiteboard uh, just something to remember as we go through time. Variation equals distribution. Here we've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. We've got seven. One, two, three, four, five. Six. We've got seven very uh, seven values here, and we can see there's variation from two to ten. And um, but when we look at the uh, the individual numbers, the set of numbers, we're looking at the distribution. Distrib distributes from two to four to five to seven to eight to ten and uh, to ten. So. Um, when we're talking about distribution, we're really talking about how this particular variable could be age, it could be weight, it could be most anything varies from uh, 2 to 10. Now, central tendency is where uh, we're looking for the center of the distribution. Uh, think of it as a, think of it as a teeter-totter. Where's the pivot point of that distribution? So that about half of the values are on one side and half of the other. And we want to find the center in a way so that that teeter-totter won't teeter or won't totter, but finds its balance there. And um, central tendency is about that. And it works for categorical variables in, in a way uh, also as well as it works for um, continuous variables. And we'll look at those distinctions here in a minute. When we get to next week in chapter four, uh, when we look at a distribution like the one here on the whiteboard, we won't really be looking at the center, but we'll look, be looking at its dispersion. How, does, how can we assess the amount of variation around the mean or the median, which we'll talk about here in a minute, say the, the center of the distribution, how, does, how is there variation around the mean? on either side of the mean. How, is that very, how does the distribution disperse away from the mean? That's the subject of next week. Uh, this week is about, shall we say, a collapsing to the center. Finding the centermost value in a single value that will say something about uh, that distribution. For example, if we had talking about two classes of classrooms of students and statistics, if we were to take all of the uh, ages of the um, students in one group and add them up and divide by the number of students, we would get the average of the mean age in that, in that, in that class. If we were to do that uh, for a second class and we were to find that the second class's average age was 28 and the class of uh, the first one was 23, then very quickly we would be able to compare that one class is on average older than the other. So one of the values of, just in any statistics really, but what we're talking about right now, if we find the center of the distribution, we can use that as a comparative statistic to say, like the illustration we just did, that one distribution or one class is older than the other. And we've captured that distinction by a single value, which is each of the distribu two distributions uh, central tendency. So that's really why we, we think about central tendency and why it's important in um, statistics. The other reason why it's important, and let me go up here, go to the whiteboard, um, 
is that last time we were talking about uh, we were talking about y equals x or y and x we were talking about descriptive statistics where we had a y and we had an x and we were looking at um, individual who are looking at rates and things like that well, we're still in we're still in descriptive statistics through chapter four where we were looking at rates and proportions to percentages the other day here we're looking at the means and the modes and uh, and the medians of distribution so we're still in a y comma x if I can put it that way where we're in descriptive statistics where we're looking at distributions of y, distributions of x, or distribution of any numbers of x's or y's that we might have of interest to us. Uh, and again, next week we'll look at how these disperse, how the x, all the variation disperses around the mean of any, any given x or y. So we're still in, we're still in descriptive statistics here. Um, let's, there are some measures of central tendency that are of interest to us today. Um, one is the uh, mode, and um, one is the median, and one is the mean. And we're also going to look at um, we're also going to look at percentiles. All right, so uh, that's P-E-R-C-E-N-T-I-L-E-S is what that says. Uh, so when we think about uh, mode, for example, there are uh, mode. Mode applies to both categorical and continuous variables. For example, if we have each one of these is a frequency in this distribution that we have here. We have a frequency of one, a frequency or uh, one frequency of 2, 1 frequency of 4, 1 frequency of 5, 1 frequency of 7, 1 frequency of 8, but we have two frequencies of 10. So we're in a situation to identify a mode. We're looking where there is a frequency that is more than 1 to begin with. Um, but that frequency that is more than any other. Let's say, for example, if we had three tens here, or we had two tens here, and we had a, a 2 over here, then we'd be bimodal mode. This would be bimodal of 10 and, and 2. But if we had three 2s and two 10s, then this would be the mode because is, it, this is the frequency that is most frequent, if I may say so. Three 2s as opposed to two 10s. So the mode is the way to think about it is what is, has the highest frequency. Uh, let me restore what we had here before we start adding things. Um, now, that's for continuous variables. If we had, um, if we had a, a categorical variable, let's say that we had um, a uh, males in the class, like we were doing the other day, are five, and females in the class are 25, then the females would be the mode because that is the category with the highest frequency. Now mode doesn't have to be 50% or greater. We could have, say for example, let's use an attitudinal variable, that was a nominal variable of gender. Let's say that we have very happy and happy and not so happy. And um, let's say that we have uh, 30 of us are very happy and uh, 40 of us are um, happy, and about 20 of us are not so happy. Well, here we can see that the mode is happy because it's the one that has the greatest frequency of us uh, who say that we are happy. Uh, but yet, it's not 50%. If we were to add 30 and 20, that would be more, that would be more than half of the group. So the mode in this case, just an illustrate, it's less than half. Now it could be half, which is more than half, which is what we saw with gender. There were far more women than men in the mode, in the gender mode, which was female. So, but the point is, is that it's the category that has the highest frequency, but not necessarily 50% or greater. 
and in a continuous variable it is the uh, frequency uh, that is more than one it could be seven or fifteen or twenty but uh, but that's how you look how you would identify the mode for example in this distribution okay um, let's look at uh, uh, median for example median is uh, an interesting concept in fact in a way in terms of central tendency I'd say median for continuous variables now. We're speaking of continuous variables. Uh, even though Healy says that medians work well for ordinal, I don't find that they work all that well. So let's just uh, disregard Healy's comment about the median and uh, ordinal variables. Um, you're looking for the center of a distribution with the median, and if you've got three categories, well, most likely the one in the middle, like happy a minute ago, would be the median. Um, I don't find it all that useful. Uh, at the level we're talking about here. So we'll, we'll reserve median for uh, continuous and mean for continuous, which means to say that mode, median, and mean are cool for all, th uh, all three of those measures are good for continuous. We just saw how this is a mode in this particular distribution. All right, now median and the, uh, the general idea of comparison between median and mean is the median is in the exact, shall we say, geographic center of the distribution without regard to the values either to the left or the right. It is the position. It's a positional variable or value in the exact geographic center of the distribution. Again, without regard to low and high values either way. Now, the mean is a measure of central tendency, but it's highly influenced by the values in the distribution. Like you might imagine, let's just say, that if uh, we have one, a couple of low values here, saying five and below is low, uh, and a number of high values, the mean would be pulled to the right, uh, and you'll see how that will work. Higher values will pull the mean to the right, and what we'll call a positive skew here in a minute, or uh, a series or a number of low values in the distribution will pull the uh, mean to the left, or um, a negative skew, which we'll talk about here in a few minutes. So the interesting thing about the difference between median and mean is median sits in the exact geographic center of the distribution, uninfluenced by the tens and the twos and the sevens and the fives. Uh, whereas the mean doesn't sit necessarily, sometimes it will, in the center of the distribution, but it moves. It's highly influenced by low values and high values, so that in any distribution you might have the median in the geographic center but you might have the mean off to the right, let's say, if there are high values, or you might have the median in the center of the distribution, but you might, if there are a number of low values, the mean will be pulled to the left. And we'll, we'll kind of look at that here in a minute. All right, those are the distinctions between, or uh, the chief distinction between median and mean. And when you're doing reports, and you'll find, for the most part, when you're reading reports that have statistics in them, uh, the authors will report the median and the mean. Uh, the median gives you again the geographic center of the distribution and the mean gives you a, another measure of central tendency but a measure that's influenced by high and by low values. Okay, um, let's look at, this is a one, two, three, four, what would you say, this was seven, right? Uh, a seven value um, distribution. Now, um, when we are calculating out medians, what you want to do is you want to lay your values. It's probably good practice anyway. Lay your values, low values to the left, with increasing values to the right. In our culture, we read from left to right, and the way we read values for the most part in statistics and mathematics would be low values on the left uh, to high values on the right, kind of follow our regular uh, reading sequence. And if we're doing a... Um, uh, if we were to do this in vertical, low values would be on the bottom and high values on the top. So we would just simply turn this this way if we wanted to look at it in a vertical way. So anyway, uh, whenever you're calculating the median, absolutely for sure, put your numbers in, um, in a uh, numerical sequence, low value, lowest on the left, and highest on the right. And as we were talking about, this is, this is the range We'll talk about this next time. The range of this one is between the values of 2 and 10. Another little uh, 
look at how this distribution. Number of ways of looking at this. Again, the median is a measure of position. What we're trying to do with the median is find where is the position of the median in this distribution. All right. So here we have an an odd number. So when we do odd odd distribution, odd number of distribution, uh, these formulas are in the in the text. Um, you have n plus 1 divided by 2. So um, if we then, if we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, then this would be 7 plus 1 divided by 2, which is 8 divided by 2 equals 4. Now we get this value of 4, but that is not the median. That is the position of the median. So then we go 1, 2, 3, 4. This becomes the median. Or 1, 2, 3, 4. That becomes the median. And you can say, oh, well, I can see that. I don't need no formula to tell me that that uh, value is the median. It's obviously 7 is in the center of that distribution. But if we had 111 values out there, or 356, you'd be glad to have this formula, believe me. So uh, we're using these uh, relatively uh, small distributions in order to make our point, are we not? Um, so anyway, remember when you do the median again, it's the position. If you get four and report that as the median, it isn't going to pass uh, the homework. It's not going to pass the test. and It's not going to be right. That is the position in the distribution. This is not the median. That's the position. All right. So uh, that's for odd. All right. So let's, let's say, uh, let's add a one over here. And now we have eight values. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, and so now we do an, we look for the even um, median. And um, this one's a little strange, but it works. You do uh, n uh, divided by two and then plus one. That's a comma. So let's say that that's what this is right here. And then you divide that by two kind of a convoluted formula, is it not? I think probably Healy does it more clearly than I do, but it's a demonstration. So here we have 8, and so then what we would do is we do um, uh, 8 divided by 2 equals 4, and then we'd say uh, plus 1, 4 plus 1 equals 5, so then we go to, we've got positions 4 and 5. So we go 1, 2, 3, 4. That's position 4. And 5. And this is position 5. So then we would take, so we've got a 5 and a 7. Position 4 is 7. Position 5 is um, uh, 5. And so we would add up. 5 plus 7 equals 12, divide by 2 equals 6. So we'd say the median is right in here somewhere. Uh, 6. It's not in the distribution itself, but mathematically we can derive it by the formula that we just did. Now, this seem, may seem a little convoluted. You check out Healy, uh, maybe for a little more clear uh, description. But uh, so the, differ the difference is here is that uh, the odd, it's the number of in the distribution plus one divided by two. And for even, it's the number in the distribution divided by two, and then go one value more to get the, the one next to it. And then those two positions, you take the values in those two positions, add them up and divide by two. All right, now that's the median. And it's a, it's a positional value. So I want to keep that, uh, keep that in mind. And while we're on position, I'm going to just skip the mean for a minute and go to uh, percentile because it's a, it's a positional uh, statistic as well. If we wanted to find, let's say, um, where the 40th percentile is, uh, we're looking at the distribution here and we just say that there, we can look at what percentage are below 5, what percentage are above 10, what percentage of this, if we want to look at the percentage distribution of this, and we're going to do a lot of that uh, coming about chapter 6, 7, 8, somewhere in there. Uh, but here we're wanting to find out, let's say, 
where, uh, what is the 40th percentile? Where is it that we would find the mark, make the line here, below which would be 40% of the distribution, and above it would be 60% of the distribution, with the distribution, of course, being 100%. So if we said we wanted to do 40, then um, what we would do is uh, 40, remember, going back to what we were doing the other day, percent is just another thing, word for proportion. So uh, we'll knock out the 100 to make it a percent and just call it proportion. So instead, and 40 percent would do 0 0.40, times, and there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 values here, times 8, 0 0.40 times 8, and um, let's multiply that out, use my handy little calculator here, 8 times 0 0.40 um, equals 3.2. So, what we would do, in this case, uh, for purpose of illustrations, this equals uh, 3.2. So let's round down. And generally, uh, this will be the principle that you can use in statistics throughout the semester. Generally, if it's a, a 3.5 or a 0.5 and above, round up. If it's a 0.4 or below, go ahead and round down. So this is less than 0.5. So for the purposes of this and then for your homework, it's okay. Uh, here is a, a 3. So then we would go and say, this is position. This is not the 40th percentile. This is the position of the 40th percentile. So if we round down, we go 1, 2, 3. So we would say this is 40 percent and this is 60 percent. So percentile is another positional statistic like median. You always want to remember that when you do your formula and get your answer here, that's only the position. Then you have to go to the distribution and find what is the value in the position that you have derived from this formula. So in this case, the 40th percentile is 40 is 4 and below, uh, and everything beginning with 5 and above is 60% of the distribution. And if, you were, if we wanted to find 30% or 90% or 80% or 53% or whatever percent you wanted to do, you do exactly the same thing. 53, you do 0.53 times 8. 90, you do 0.90 times 8. Uh, the logic goes on the same way. So we just used 40% because it came out of us that way. And uh, we found that to be a, a 3, rounding down. And we count 1, 2, 3. And in that position right there is the uh, top of the 40th percentile. So here begins the 60th percentile with 5. So that's how that worked. Again, that's a position value, just like we would find in uh, if we were doing the median. Okay. Now, um, I lost my piece of paper. Oh, yes. Um, what we want to talk about now is the mean. Now I'm going to write, uh, I've got to put this back here. Uh, one, two, uh, what do we have? Four, five, seven, eight, ten, and ten. We're still with this distribution. Now we want to find the mean. We found the median in this distribution, as I recall, was about right here, six. Um, so when we, uh, remember we did um, uh, the n divided by 2, got a value, plus another value, uh, the neighboring value, and then take the two values, positions, then take the two values on this position, divide by 2, and that's how we got that 6. So that's kind of the median up here. So here we want to talk about the mean, and the way, we, way the mean is uh, noted, notation for it, is sum of xi over n. Now, x bar is the way we note uh, the mean in statistics. So it could be a y bar if we were doing y distributions, but here we're talking about x distributions, but the principle is the same thing. So here we have the sum of xi. Now we go and we look at these values we've got here. We've got 8. This is x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, x6, x7, x8. So we've got 8 x's denoted here as xi, that's all the x's, not individual x's, but all the x's. So we sum up, this is basically says this sum of xi, this, we sum up all of the x's in the top to get the numerator and divide them by the denominator. Now if I did my math correctly, this would equal 47, summing across here, excluding the median, and um, dividing by 8, 
I get a 5.9 or rounding up a 6. So the mean is pretty close to where the median is. That's an important point that we'll do here in a minute when we talk about uh, skews and uh, positive and negative skews. All right, so um, if we were to, um, I think that pretty much, uh, all right, so we got to, let me give the illustration of what happens if the mean changes or if, the, if, the, if this changes. Let's say, um, let's say that we added, we changed this value here to a 20. Now we know 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. The median is going to stay the same. It's not determined by the values in the distribution. It's determined by the place in the distribution. This could be 20, 200, 2,000, 200 million or whatever. The median would stay the same. It's in the center, geographic center of the distribution. But the mean will change. So if we change this to 20, this 10 to 20, then we know that the if we were to sum across uh, now equals the sum of xi over n, then uh, we're going to have a higher value. And this would be 57 this time divided by 8. And if my math is correct, uh, I'll have about a 7. So uh, now uh, the mean has shifted up. It was, a, it was about 6. Now it ha is a 7. But yet the median stays the same. So the median, the mean has been pulled to the right, has increased um, as a result of this higher value. And of course, if we'd left this as a 10 and added so another one or so down here, the opposite would have happened. It would have pulled the mean to the left of the distribution. It would have been lower than the median. The median would have stayed in the same place, but the mean would have been uh, pulled to the left. Uh, important, important ways of the distinctions between uh, the mean and the median. All right, so um, let's uh, talk about, let me put this number back, something that's important about the mean. Um, if we wanted to uh, characterize, we just, uh, on this one, I think uh, the mean is, um, the mean equals 6, the way we calculated it out a minute ago. And I think the median also equals a 6. And we'll talk about how important that uh, piece of information is here in a minute. If we wanted to find out what is the variation around the mean, this is kind of a leading into chapter 4, um, if we wanted to find out the variation around the mean, then um, we would do something like um, we would do something like like this. I'm going to get out of your way here. Uh, we'd have a ten and a ten and an eight and a seven and a five and a four and a two and a one. We would go down this way. And then we would want to subtract the mean. Minus 6, 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 minus 6. Now if we were to do that, this would equal 4, uh, this would equal 4, this would equal 2, this would equal 1, this would equal minus 1, this would equal minus 2, this would equal minus 4, and this would equal minus 5. Now, the way we're th thinking about this, let me erase this uh, little piece right here, and we've established what we got as a mean, is that when we're, when we're looking at the, uh, at the distribution here, we're to find the mean, we want to see how much variation there is around the mean. We want to be able to look at, if this is the mean, how much variation is there around the mean? How much variation in terms of seven, uh, six minus seven, and that sort of thing. If this is the mean right here, um, then we know, and we'll go ahead and draw one of these deals we'll look at here in a minute. Here's the mean, and here's 1, and here's 10. Everything, everything to the right of the mean is going to be higher than the mean, as you can see here. 7 is higher than 6, 8 higher than 6, 10 higher than 6, 10 higher than 6. So we're going to get positive values on the right-hand side. If, on the other hand, we look to the left of the mean, we see that everything is smaller than the mean. So if we subtract the mean from that, we're going to get minus signs. So the minus, 
On the left-hand side of the mean is a negative or a minus part of the distribution. Everything on the right-hand side is a plus or positive side of the distribution. So as you can imagine, in something like this, if we were to add, let's say, minus and a plus, we're going to get a big fat zero. And yes, that's true. And you'll see that here. And there's a good illustration in your text that you can take a look at uh, that lays that out in this chapter. But if we were to do this, you can see this is 4, 8, about 11. And this is about 11. I rounded, so it's not exactly precise. So if we were to add up this and this, uh, the 11 minus 11 and the, mi and the plus 11, we'd come up with a zero. So clearly, this is not going to help us determine how much variation there is around the mean if we do the simple math that you might expect intuitively that you would do. So what we do is we square these values. So uh, this, is, this is something called um, uh, x... Uh, xi minus x bar squared. So we're going to take each one of these x's and uh, subtract the mean and square it. So then this would be 16, this would squared 16, that's 4, that's 1, that's 1, that's 4, that's 16, and that's 25. So by squaring them, multiplying them times themselves, of course these are already positive, but when you multiply a, a negative times a negative, you get a positive value. So now we've converted all this to positive values, and we'd sum them up. And whatever that sum would be, 16 plus 16 plus 4 plus 1 plus 1 plus 4 plus 16 plus 25, that we would say would be the amount of variation there is around the mean. And uh, keep this in mind. Look at it in the text. It's going to be an important piece of what we're going to do when we move into Chapter 4 uh, next week, uh, using this to uh, look at the variation or the variance around the center of the distribution. Okay, I think that uh, pretty much covers what we're, uh, chapter, chapter three. So, uh, uh, it's Thursday. Uh, I'm not sure what day we have it today. What day is today? Uh, let me see. Um, I, hard to keep track of all these days, is it not? Um, I think my, this will tell me here in a minute, maybe. Um, for some reason it's not moving very fast, but that's all right. 12th, it's the 12th. So this is Thursday the 12th, and uh, I'll be posting this video sometime today. Later today I'll be grading your homework too, um, which you have either sent me by email or you've posted on the website and I'll give you that, uh, I'll put your grades out there on the website. And um, I've not yet decided what to do about the first um, exam. We may, uh, we, may, uh, we may not do an exam or I'll maybe make it optional. Uh, put it out there, post it for the in-class version of stats and your online uh, version of stats. Uh, but I'll, I'll let you know by email uh, later in the day. So, next week is chapter four. And um, I hope you're finding these videos um, helpful. Uh, you take care. It's Thursday. And uh, there's a weekend coming up. And you be careful out there, you hear? Talk to you next week.